Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on March 19th, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to The Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here, looking at the sun for the past two days as we've been in the C-class flare range, but we did just recently see an M-class solar flare that was Earth facing, which put us into a minor radio blackout impact. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, we do have 11 sunspot regions. A couple more building here, cresting into view. Pretty large plasma shot as well. Equatorial. Haven't seen the CME models for it just yet. Looking at outgoing. A little solar tornado there and some plasma loops. Looking at multi-spectrum pointing out the last 48 hours of events. And as well, the magnetic field of the coronal hole. As we did have southern coronal hole that was earth-facing. And as well, equatorial. And another one small, another small coronal hole. Developing. Cresting into view. Looking at 171 angstroms here. Just an amazing way to see our sun. Brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Mixed with daily events worldwide. And thank you so much for pressing play. Staying aware and prepared. With almost 89,000 followers. Keep sharing and caring my friends and family. Looking at sunspot regions in motion. As there are 11. Five of them that are earth facing. Six that are turning away. A lot of these sunspot regions kind of came out of nowhere. 4031, there was a 20% chance for an X class solar flare over the next 48 hours. 4035, 10% chance as well. 11 Earth facing sunspots. Current space weather conditions R1 minor radio blackout impacts with a small duration M class solar flare. Solar winds are coming in at 503 kilometers per second, which is still super fast on our planet. Solar X-ray flux showing here, minor M1.2 solar flare. Other than that, it's been in the C range. Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity hop hopped up to a KP4 early this morning with geomagnetic instability expected here. Looking at the space weather spiral from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Showing we are getting missed by a few CMEs that took off in a southern fashion on our sun. Notable in the top diagrams there. Solar storms just missing us and maybe a glancing blow into the 23rd and 24th. Looking at Lasco 3, showing the wide spectrum. Most of the coronal mass ejections have been taking off from the polar regions. Yet again, another large one in the last few images. If you look at the first imagery at 304 angstroms, you'll be able to see the plasma shot that created this coronal mass ejection back in the first couple minutes of the solar diagrams. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours. We did just have a pretty deep earthquake in the Fiji region. Typical, but piling up. 4.8 earthquake, 548 kilometer depth. As well, notable 5.1, 558 kilometer depth. Fiji is a rocking. Indonesia is a rocking as well through the Banda Sea from Papua New Guinea and up into northern Indonesia. Lewuk, Indonesia. 5.0 in the middle of Japan, 5.0 earthquake, West Aleutian Islands, North American plate, notable 3.7, Petrolia, California, during a time where I was warning of an earthquake along the West Coast, 3.6 earthquake there, Quebec, Canada. Now let's just have a look at USGS for the last 24 hours as they're reporting 217 earthquakes 
And this is a region that I've been watching all around the San Francisco Basin. And as well, Trepinos, California. San Andreas Fault Line. Right up to the geysers. It's been a pretty active week. Out of the 217 earthquakes, 60 of them have been from the geysers south to the San Andreas Fault. And over the past seven days, there's been 457 earthquakes throughout the region, piling up. San Andreas Fault Line, right here, lining up right into the San Francisco Bay. Recent earthquake swarm, this is the last 48 hours, largest being a 3.9 Dublin, California. That was on St. Paddy's Day, ironically. And then, of course, the geysers, which are always busy, but they've been exceptionally busy recently. Looking across the West Coast and up to, into the Pacific Northwest, now across into Texas. That just seems to be continual now. Across the United States, notable earthquakes there. Kentucky, as well Missouri, and Mississippi. McGee, Mississippi with a 3.0. Minor seismicity north and west of Yellowstone. Nothing in the lake or around the lake, but notable earthquakes piling up Washington and up into Canada in the Pacific Northwest. Juan de Fuca Plate still on watch. Cocos Plate active today, 4.6, 4.8 in Equ um, Guatemala. South American Plate, 5.3 year earthquake, Chile. Actually, pretty quiet South American plate right now, except for South Sandwich Islands. Scotia plate with a 5.4 earthquake. That's the largest last 24 hours. Notable earthquake there. Northern Italy, 3.1. Earthquakes have been piling up there as well. All around, it can't be flaggery. Heads up, my friends and family. And thank you so much for pressing play. This is a look at the last seven days for shakers and movers around the world. Elevated rings off the planet are the, showing the depth of the earthquakes. And they've been piling up through Fiji without any larger shallower earthquakes for a while. So please, just be aware and prepared. Hashtag no fear here. Just aware and prepared. Have a plan. Be ready in your earthquake prone zones. But especially up into the Juan de Fuca, it's been way too quiet. Now let's have a look at our air quality forecast brought to you by, of course, our 75 active and erupting volcanoes around the world. Sulfur dioxide emissions here. Big forecast coming out of Kamchatka, Kilauea, as well as Mexico, Guatemala. But the air does not look too nice across the northern hemisphere right now. As we've seen multiple eruptions through the Aleutian Islands, from three, three volcanoes through there, and as well about five through eastern Russia. If you haven't seen the latest video, please check it out. Released that last night. Link right here for you. As well, notable earthquakes, Aoba, or sorry, uh, eruptions at Aoba. White Island as well. North Atlantic. There is just a lot of SO2 that is still swirling around from the eruptions through eastern Russia, Kamchatka, as well, Mexico. Now let's have a look at world weather here. Strong system moving through Ontario the, over the next 48 hours will bring blizzard-like conditions on the backside. Other than that, it's going to be a fast-moving system coming into a high-pressure ridge, so it won't be much moisture, but there will be a lot of wind and electric Electrifying events, I guess you could say, over the next few days as spring is upon us, but we've still got a few more systems that are going to be bringing snow across Canada and as well, western United States. Watch for extreme weather here. Long-range forecast into April Fool's Day. Big extreme weather event for the Gulf states up into the eastern seaboard. Overlooking Africa. Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia. No major cyclones here forecast over the next seven days. But watching some strong lows 
linger around the northwest region of Australia. Multiple waves of moisture and days of moisture for Northwest Territories and as well Queensland as a low lingers around there for Australia. South Africa, quieting down, no more cyclones in your forecast for Madagascar. Then overlooking here, the North Pacific West Coast, British Columbia and northward into Alaska. Multiple low pressure systems coming through this week and they're going to be strong and they're also going to be cold. Eventually, high pressure ridge will be knocked out and these systems will penetrate the Rockies and spring will be upon us. But we got to wait for those upper level winds to change as we embark on the spring equinox for 2025 Having a look now at the upper level winds, they're starting to calm down 252 kilometers per hour. Last week, they were four, over 400 kilometers per hour. But definitely, we've got a fight between our magnetic north and the true north. Look at all the increased winds along the equator. I've shown over the past few months the differences between today. 2025 and last year. Look at the southern hemisphere as the velocity is starting to pick up. Gonna leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere, upper level winds 2024 versus 2025. And again, I want to thank you for all for all the follows. Thank you for all the interest in the information shared here and produced. Much love to you all. Stay safe out there. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye-bye now.